welcome back to another LP Gallery tutorial. Today, we're talking about creating an ink bleed effect. This is something that's very commonly done in Photoshop, and we're going to create a reasonable facsimile directly in PowerPoint just using the PowerPoint tools. So let's take a look at this. You notice that I've got a nice lined piece of paper here, and I've done that so I can see the lines through the object itself. It just adds a little bit of realism to it. So here we have the words ink bleed. What makes an ink bleed very effective is that you're going to have sharp edges where it doesn't bleed, where it's right on the paper and it's sharp. And then you're going to have the soft blurry edges where the ink is actually bleeding into the paper. You can see that we have that here. We have hard edges and soft edges, just like it is in a real ink bleed. And you can see we have some of the ink bleeding into the paper. And again, you can see the lines coming through it. So again, that's really useful. It really adds a little bit of realism to it. But you could just do this right directly on your blank slide. But I think if you have a little texture behind it, like say a textured paper or something, it just makes it look a little more realistic, a little more interesting. And as you see down here, we can also apply it to shapes. Again, the same principle. We have some sharp edges where it doesn't bleed and some very blurry edges where the ink is blurring together, like you see here. Now, this is all interactive. That means you can continue to modify this. So I'm going to click on the text, go to go my fill, and as I move this, you can see it's changing. So it really looks quite interesting, and you can see it really looks like the ink is flowing. And, of course, the same thing here. If I click there, I can move it back or forth, whatever I like, get the nice feeling of inks bleeding into each other and that the ink is bleeding into the objects and the ink is bleeding into the paper. So anyways, that is our goal and it's something very easily done in PowerPoint. Okay, so let's get started. Now I have my paper texture to the left that gives us the right side of the slide to create our objects. Okay, so I have the word ink bleed and the next thing I'm going to do is go to my format. I'm going to go to text effect, transform, and turn it into a word art. And I think I'm going to change the font. I think a thicker font looks a little nicer than a thin font. But you could try either way. So I'm going to go to home, go to my font list, and I'm going to choose impact. And then I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger. Just stretch it out. Something like this. This looks pretty good. Okay. And I'm going to change the color. I'm going to make it a nice blue, just like ink. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to take this, drag it to the slide here, and I'm going to create a duplicate. Now, one of these has to be the paper texture. Remember, we want the ink to go through the paper, so we want the paper texture to show through. So I'm going to click on my paper texture. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to click on this one here. And remember, that's still the text. So we go to Text Options, go to Fill, Paper Texture Fill. You get your default. I'm going to say clipboard. And now you can see that when you insert an image into text, it either compresses it or stretches it so that the whole image fills the shape. And that's not what I want. I just want the lines itself. So what I'm going to do is go here, tile, and you can see the tiles, but by default, it's going to the top left, which is up here. That's not what I want. We need to change the alignment to the center so we get the lines. So that's very important. You need to tile it and center it. Okay, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is take this and put it on top. And we're going to line it up. That's pretty good. And then I'm going to take the blue text and I'm going to make it transparent. So I'm going to deselect and click on it again. Make sure I got the blue text. Go to my text options. And I'm going to take the transparency maybe about 50%. Roughly somewhere on there, 50, let's say 55%. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to copy them. And I'm going to paste them as a picture. Okay, so now it's an image. It's no longer text. Okay, now with that, I can actually use my picture tools. So I've got my picture tools. I'm going to go to Format. I'm going to go to Color. I'm going to make a little more blue. And I also want to make it a little more darker. So I'm going to go down here and make it a little darker. But I can still see the lines. You don't want to make it so dark you can't see the lines. And all I have to do is line it up, and you can see how that looks. Now the next thing I'm going to do is create that nice blurry area behind the text where the ink is blurring into the page. 
So what I'm going to do is take this, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to put a nice blur on this. So I'm going to go to my effects, artistic effects right here. I'm going to put a nice blur on it, and I'm going to take the radius up, and something like this. Okay, now, normally, I wouldn't want a hard edge like this, like a square edge around the blur, but that doesn't really matter because I'm going to be cutting all this out anyways. So I'm going to go to my home, and I'm going to go and use one of my tools here. I'm going to take this one here. So I'm going to take this nice freeform scribble tool, and I'm going to just go like this. I want to break it up, so I'm not looking for any pattern. I'm just trying to break it up. Now what I'm going to do is go up like this, not down. I want to go up and over, okay? So I'm going to use this to cut into that. So I'm going to click the blur. I'm going to click on the shape. I'm going to go to Format, Merge, and Subtract. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And you'll see how that works out. Okay, so once again, I'm going to go home and grab my scribble. And again, I'm not trying to make any kind of pattern. I just want to break up the edges here. So it doesn't matter how it looks, just break them up. Just like that. And again, you have to go outside, not inside. Okay, outside, like that. And we're going to click on that. We're going to click on that. And do the same thing, format, subtract. Okay, it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go to my effects, and I'm going to use what's called the soft edge. So I'm going to take that and just do a nice soft edge. Now I think what I'll probably do is cut some holes in here. So I'm going to go back to my home. I'm taking my scribble tool, and I'm going to kind of just go like this. So it's not a solid blurry background, just pieces of it. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to click here, go to format, again, subtract. And I'm going to go back home and take my scribble and maybe just do another one over here. And go to format again and subtract. Okay. Now I'm going to take this, put it over there. I'm going to bring this to the front. And this is going to go to the background. Okay. We can stretch it out a little bit more. And you can kind of see how it's starting to look like it's bleeding into the paper. It looks pretty good. I'm happy with that so far. What's the next step? Now, what's going to create this nice ink bleed effect is if this ink bleed text shape has some hard edges to it and some very soft edges that blend into the background. So that's what we're going to do next. Now, it's a pretty easy effect. We're going to just take this one down. What we're actually going to do is take this ink bleed, this paper one, copy it and paste it into here. Now, if you're not familiar with copying and pasting into a picture, this is kind of how it works. I'm going to just duplicate this. Now, the picture is still in a box, and the box has its own background. So you can actually fill that background with whatever you like. So if I were to go here, and let's say, put a green color, it fills the background. Now, if I was to go here, and put a texture in there, this is actually in the box itself. It's not part of the ink bleed picture itself. It's independent. So if I was to go here and spin it, you can see it's going to move. So that tells you that that texture is in the box itself and it's independent. So that's kind of how this works. So when we take this and copy it and put it here, we're going to be able to move the X offset and have it go across like this. And that's what's going to give us the nice hard and soft edges. Okay, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy. And I'm going to click here, Picture, Texture. Of course, it remembers the last one. Let's go to Clipboard. Again, we have to tile. Make sure you're centered. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we use the X offset. And what we're getting now are hard edges. We're not getting any soft edges. To get the soft edges, we have to go to Effects. And we have to use the Soft Edge tool right here. So maybe about two, maybe three. Okay, now if we go back and run it, you're going to see that. So it really looks like the ink is flowing. And you can see it's blurring into the paper pretty good. And you can just move it to the point you like, where you get some nice hard edges, some soft edges. Now make sure, as you're moving this, remember you're moving this here, ink bleed, that you can't actually read the text. So you want to move it so that the text is not really visible in the background. But you can see what's happening here. So this ink bleed, and maybe I'll just show you that over here. See the word ink bleed? is moving across and that's what's creating the soft and hard edges. Now to explain that, let me just show you this. 
if you're not quite understanding that, let me just do it a little bit simpler. I'm going to take this and I'm going to take the circle and I'm going to go to merge, subtract. Let's give this a nice texture fill. Let's take this paper texture. Okay, now if I go here to soft edges, that's what you're going to get. The texture itself is not affected unless it's near the edge. So how the soft edge tool works is it goes to edges and it takes the edges and blends them. But there has to be transparency. So obviously it's all transparent on the outside. Okay, the rectangle only exists here. So there's nothing on the outside. The circle is obviously hollow and transparent. So again, it applies only to edges that are touching transparency. Now let's put this back and let me copy this. Paste this as a picture. That's exactly what we did with the blue text here. Let's get rid of this one. Now let me go here. Let's draw a circle. Let's make it a green circle. Now again, this is a picture just like the ink bleed text is a picture. I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to click here and I'm going to paste it. Clipboard and there it is. This is in the background. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to tile it and I'm going to move it. And you can see it's moving, so it's clearly in the background. Okay, now let's go here to the soft edges. And now let's take a look. Now, again, the soft edges are going across the outside, but let's take a look where the circle is. Okay, you get a soft edge here, you get a soft edge on the green here, on the green here, and a soft edge here. But where the green actually touches the paper texture, there's no soft edge. That's because it's not touching a transparency. The paper texture is on top of the green. So there is no transparency there. Okay, so it's on top of something else. And again, the soft edges only happens when the edges are touching something transparent. So again, the green part here is touching transparency. So you get the soft edge. And that's how it works. And as I move it, you can see what's happening. As long as the texture is touching the object underneath, you're going to get a hard edge. But where the object underneath is touching transparency, it gets a nice soft edge. Let's get rid of this. And that's exactly what's happening here. Okay. So again, where this ink bleed is touching the blue text, you get a hard edge. Where they no longer overlap, you get the nice soft edge effect. Okay. Now, what you can also do is this. If you want a harder edge, let's say you don't want it so blended, you can go back here. And maybe take it down to like something like that. Okay, it's a harder edge, but then it doesn't become soft. So you can see that. So what you can do is take this. We're going to copy this, paste it as a picture. You can't put a soft edge on text. So we're going to take that and we're going to go here and we're going to make that a soft edge. And then we're going to copy that. Click here and we're going to, again, clipboard, tile, and when we move that, you're getting a l slightly less soft edge. Let's go back here, maybe one more, that's better. At least two point. And now we do that, we get a much lighter soft edge. So we get more hard edge and just a hint of the soft edge bleed. Okay, so it's up to you. You can go really heavy duty or just a hint. And I think it looks pretty good. So you want to make sure the lines are lined up here so it looks more realistic and that looks pretty good. And again, if you want more of a softer edge, just take this up a bit and you get more of a softer edge. Now you can do the vertical too. Now if you want to play with the vertical, the problem is with the lines. So if we do the vertical, spin it down, you got to make sure the lines line up and they don't always line up. It just depends on how this is created, how you scanned it. So you can see they're not always lining up perfectly. So that's the problem with the verticals. Now, if you're doing this just on a plain background, it's not going to really matter. You're not going to notice it that much. And we go left or right, whatever you like. Okay. But you can see the lines aren't lining up. So I'm going to get rid of the vertical. And we have something like that. Okay. So anyways, that's how you do a simple ink bleed effect. So the next thing I'm going to do is put the ink bleed on shapes. We'll use a circle, triangle, and a square. Now just to save some time, I have my three shapes drawn here. So we have a red circle, yellow triangle, and a blue square. Nice bright colors. And I've got them fairly close together. So when we do this background bleed, the colors will actually bleed together. So that looks pretty good. Okay, next thing to do is to select them and group them. 
So again, remember, they're individual shapes. They're not pictures. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this. And we have to create this nice paper pattern in them. Now, since they're grouped together, we can copy the paper and paste it as one item. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to click on this. Make sure I got my box there. And I'm going to paste it in there. So it's going to paste it. It's going to take the center part, paste it right in here as one item. So it's actually one item going across all three shapes. So let's go to picture texture. We get the default. Let's go to clipboard. We get that. We have to tile it. And of course, make sure it's centered. Okay, now just to show you that it's actually just one picture going across, I'll go to the X offset. I'll make it about 200. And you can see what's happening there. So you can see it's going right across all three. It's just one big picture. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we have to take this, put it on top here. So we're going to take that. We're going to bring it to the front. And we're going to put it on top because we have to make it transparent so you can see the paper texture behind it. So let's select all this. We have to line them. Line center, line middle. So we're going to click on the group and you notice that we don't have access to the transparency. So we have to click on the individual pieces within the group. Once we do that, we get access to our transparency. And I'll just make this maybe about 55. That looks pretty good. So once again, I'm going to select both of them, copy them, paste them as a picture. Okay, we'll put this one over here, line them up. Now, because they're pictures, we can use the picture tools. We'll go to format, we'll go to color, make them maybe a little brighter. We'll go to corrections, make it a little darker. It looks pretty interesting. Okay, the next thing is create our nice blurry background there. So we're going to duplicate that. We're going to go to our effects here. We're going to go to artistic effects. And we're going to go put a nice blur on it. And we'll make it maybe around, let's say, around 75%. So we get this really big blur. So the red is blurring to the yellow. We get a nice orange there. Yellow is going into the blue. We get a bit of green there. So it really looks like it's blurring and blending together. Okay, once again, we're going to grab our scribble tool and we're going to rough up the edges. Again, not being precise at all, just making jagged edges. And we have to go to the outside like that. Click on the blur, click on the shape. And once again, we're going to subtract. And we're going to do that again. So again, just jagged edges, not trying to be precise at all. And bring it to the outside, it has to go to the outside. Okay, we click on the blur, we click on the shape. And once again, subtract, looks good. Now we're going to go to our effects here. And again, we're going to use the soft edges, something like that, which of course we can play with later on. That looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to bring this to the front and we'll take this, put it to the back. Already you can see how we have the nice bleed and it looks really good. The red is bleeding into the yellow, yellow is bleeding into the blue, it looks pretty good. You can always stretch this out. So if I want to take this and stretch it out more, I can always do that. If you want to stretch it higher, taller, I can do that. Okay, so we get something that looks like that. Looks pretty good. Okay, so the last thing to do, of course, is to take the paper version of this copy that and paste it into here and offset it just like we did the text now the major problem is this these are very large shapes now the text shapes are very thin so when you offset them they're not quite as noticeable but this is a very big circle very big triangle very big square so when we copy and paste it and we have the soft edge and offset it you're probably going to notice those shapes so the best thing is to give this a soft edge before we copy and paste it in there Okay, so I'm going to click on this. Now, you'll notice that the soft edge is not available. That's, of course, because these are in a group. So I'm going to click the first one in the group, hold my shift, click the rest, and now that's available. I'm going to make this about a 12. That looks pretty good. Okay, now, the one that's the most problematic will be the square, because even with a nice soft edge, it's going to kind of have like a square edge. So what I'm going to do is flip this. I'm going to go to a format. I'm going to rotate it, flip it this way. So the square edge will be here. We copy paste it and I'm going to use the offset to the left rather than the right. So it's going to move this way. So the square will go from here to behind here. Okay, so let's copy that. Let's click on this. Let's go to the fill, picture texture, clipboard, tile, and what it's centered. Okay, so now I'm going to use the X offset to the left. So I'm going to be spitting down. 
And when I spin down, you kind of see that. Okay. You can see there's a triangle, there's a circle, and it's not quite as obvious. So now I need to give this a soft edge too. It's got too much of a hard edge. So let's go here and let's try maybe three. And that looks pretty good. Okay. So what do you think of that? That looks like a pretty good bleed in there. And we can keep doing this. So we're spinning down and we can keep moving it. Okay. So there's a circle there. And I think I kind of like it like this. So we get the red to orange bleed. We get the blue to yellow bleed. That looks pretty good. So we got a hard edge, a soft edge in these things. I'm going to deselect and take a look at that. It looks like it's bleeding in there pretty nicely. And we can click the background if you want. And we can stretch the background out a little more if you like. So something like that. Or make it even thinner. Make it not so obvious. So it's up to you. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. So we did a nice bleed on text. And we did a nice bleed on shapes. What would you think of that? No special tools required just done strictly in PowerPoint. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Think about subscribing because we always have some great things to do with PowerPoint. So thank you for watching and we hope to catch you on the next video.